ladies and gentlemen, we at Undiscussed Territory want to thank you for all your support. Yes. All your kind words. But this episode is actually going to be, it's going to be very different. Um, This one comes with a warning at the beginning. Um, If you value the safety of your friends and family, Mm -hmm. we highly recommend that you turn this podcast off right now. Yes. Uh, The next story we are about to cover, Gabe and I were actually arguing and discussing whether or not we should post it at all. But Mm -hmm. it's it's something that needs to be put out there. And I can't go into too much detail right now. But once you learn this information, then you're out there. Then there's no going back. You could be one of the victims. This is not a threat. This is simply a warning. If you have weak constitutions, turn this podcast off right now. now. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Not you. Oh, sorry. The audience. You can't go silly yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. You goober. We don't mess around here on this on this podcast anymore. Nope. This is all serious all the We're time. All serious. Mm-hmm. So, cue the music. A one, a two, two a one, one, two, two three. three four. Uh, are we seriously recording yeah we're oh we're recording. seriously recording mm-hmm. i thought you were joking nope all right well i guess i'll start us off so yeah like i said if you uh value the protection of your friends and family and yourself and you're easily scared turn this podcast off now because it's we are going to be talking you. about b-e-k also known as black-eyed kids or black-eyed children First, I'm going to tell you why I chose to talk about this. I tell wanted us. to talk about this because I got a text message Monday morning, and it said, "You're late." The cutest thing just happened today. Oh, she, my sister, texted me. Said my niece woke up and said, "Yaya," which is what she calls my mom, her grandmother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ga-ga. She chose that because supposedly it's easier for children to say when they're super young. And children's she, and she wanted them to call her a nickname before all the other grandparents so she chose yaya the yaya sisterhood anyway so she said yaya and uncle matt are going to live with jesus oh that's so no nice. that's not ah uh. even my family was like oh that's so that's not cute she just predicted my death she's like an oracle this is the second like <laughs> Little niece, my nephew did did it last time. Kids say the darndest things. The last time my nephew, there was a huge flood in Wimberley, and he asked, oh, is Uncle Matt at the bottom of the river? <laughs> <laughs> so I have him saying that, and now my niece is telling me I'm going to live with Jesus. And my family's like, that's so adorable. Aww. I wonder... And they kept asking You're her. Die. They're like, who told you this? Who told you this? But she wouldn't tell him. And that's super eerie jerk. to me. That's super eerie to me. I'm like, I, it kind of freaked me out. It ruined my whole day. That does. That seems like a day ruiner. So I was like, you know what? Kids really creep me out. Honestly, like I, I'm a little unnerved by kids. Like the kid at the restaurant today, who was screaming ah! when she started crawling towards me. I just yes. saw it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> the child crawling. I at was you. about to flip. Shit. That was scary. If you've ever seen a child crawl at you, you, you don't know true. So I was about to throw some bento boxes her way. I know, right? Poor kid. I was about to throw all my curry at her. About to stab her with my chopsticks. Not that far. No. Because you got to be sure it's a demonic being. Because if not, you're stabbing a child. True. True. Anyway, so yeah, that's why I chose this. I was like, she sent me that text about me going to live with Jesus. And I was like, <laughs> no, don't Aww. predict my death. All right. Who are the, the Black, Black Eyed, Eyed Peas? No. The greatest band of all time. They are. They are the greatest. And great actors, too. Oh, no. Yeah. Can you name the movie that uh, the lead singer was in? He was... Uh, 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 no. He was in Wolverine. <gasps> oh, was he really? Yeah, he played oh, that cowboy. Oh, he was in the dumb Wolverine one. Yeah, and he's just like... because. He gets, killed by, he gets killed by a uh, saber tooth. He's like, you never had a spine. And he rips his spine out. That's true. Great, great. 
Poor guy. Anyways. So what do we know about the Black Eyed Children? The only thing that we know is they venture out after dark. It's believed that they do. They're associated with strange deaths, haunting, and even the men in black. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They're seen all over the world, and they're known for coming up and knocking on doors or windows. And trying to sell you the Book of Mormon. Nope. Uh, oh. Scientology. Oh, that's right. And uh, they will approach secluded areas like off in the woods, and they often they will knock, and they have to ask for permission to come in. What else asks for permission to come in? Children? No. Oh. They are children. Uh, the government. No, they just come in. Oh, true. They make you they think they're warrant, asking. They need a warrant, though. No. Okay. Don't. What else? Vampires. Vampires asks to... Yes, they do. Too little, May too I late. come in. I am... I am the vampire! Do you remember when we were playing D&D? And I, I yelled at that. everyone, don't invite him in. And then Titus got hypnotized. True, he did. And he, and he invited him in. Anyway, so they're always asked, they're like, can I come in? Or they'll ask for a specific object or item to have. Okay, of course. Um, can I come in? No, it's ah. usually done in a monotone. Can I come in? In a very creepy way. Okay. Um, they have huge, dark, The what sets them apart, they look like regular children, but what really sets them apart and why they're called the Black Eyed Children is because they yeah. have jet black soulless eyes. Oh, That's I thought they thing. just. Oh, not like black eyes, like domestic abuse, but. OK, yeah. Just they have jet black eyeballs. Mm. Their balls of their eyes are that black. makes sense. Some people have compared it to staring at a starless night. Or black hole. Nope, there's stars in that. Oh, yeah. They're compressed. It's Einstein. frozen stars. Can't freeze a star. <laughs> Fine. If you freeze a star, there would be no. It becomes light. a black hole. That's what a frozen star is—a black hole. A frozen star is a black hole. Yes. So if I freeze a sun, it just becomes a black hole. Yeah. No chemical reaction. You'd have to. It'd have to be really cold though. I thought it was uh, like a cold day in winter. I thought it was a collapsing dwarf star that became a black hole. Nope. Or You're a totally collapsing wrong. star. I'm. Look, I know a lot of science, and I'm pretty sure I'm right. You're right. You were hanging out with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson last week. It's true. Um, we're made of star stuff! Hashtag face news. Face news? <laughs> Shut up! The idiot. Anyways. Uh, the children. The black children. The black eyed black children. Eyed they're children. known to travel in pairs. And people say upon encountering them, they're immediately struck with fear and almost frozen in place. Ah! Account. <laughs> Who is that fucking annoying? Accounts say they speak in a monotone. Yeah. They almost or have a trance and just stay, have like a thousand yard stare. And they constantly do uh, like repeat, do repetitive gestures. They talk a lot with their hands, much like yourself. Wow. They have no emotion. They barely engage. They're just like me. They barely engage with the world around them. Mm -hmm. And More they like only focus on the victim. Much like you. Oh, oh okay. Very nice. Ching. Shots fired. Shots, Shots fired. I'm hurt. Mm. My feelings. The most recent sighting was in 1996 when Brian Bethel shared his account online. He posted it on Creepypasta. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. It's a great start. Others had witnessed and thought they suffered from psychological episodes upon seeing them. They have like psychic abilities. Of course. Um, so this all happened. What happened was Brian tried to cash a check off North First Street in Abilene, Texas. Not far from here. Mm-hmm. Went to go cash a check when two young boys of 9 to 12 years old approached and knocked on his car. Come play with us. They actually wanted a ride. We need a ride. They, <laughs> they said they wanted, to, they wanted to go see a movie, but they left all their money at home and asked if he would give them a ride. They made an obvious effort to assure that they were children and not far from home. Brian what? started to open. Yeah. Okay. 
Very strange. We are definitely children. We're totally children and not grown men. <laughs> uh, so as he started to unlock and open the door, he still had an uneasy feeling. He was like, ah, oh, man, I kind of feel bad for these kids, and they're kind of vulnerable yes. out here. So I'll, I'll give him a helping hand. Come on, and children. as he went to go open the door, he that's when he noticed these soulless black eyes. Good thing he noticed it after he opened the door. Nope, he, he hadn't opened it yet. Oh. He was about to. Oh. That's when he noticed their eyes. He was then hit with an irrational fear. As they became angry and demanded, he opened the door. He then uh, locked the car and sped away. Meow. Open the door! <laughs> <laughs> we need to see the movie! What's really funny is there's some uh, skeptics that say, oh, well, maybe it's just some kind of disorder. Like, what if there actually is a rare disorder that causes your eyes to be completely black or to look black? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what do you have oversized pupils or something? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, can we have a rise? Like, Freaks! <laughs> I just Please, sir. Up. Might we have a ride? We need a ride to the movies, But it sir. doesn't explain why they were like, open the door! Open the damn door! Dang. Instantly angry. Oh, yeah. I don't like kids that are mean. Of course not. Who does? Pick on me. Did I tell you about the time when I was, like, in high school where those two kids were, like, uh, in fourth grade and they would chase me around and kick me in my shins? What? And I didn't know the kids and I, I, I didn't want to fight them back because I didn't want to beat up a kid. But they were kicking me in my, kicking me in my shins a lot. I had it a kid really do that, depressing. and he, he hit the crap out of my leg. Yeah, like and it hurt. Messed my shins up pretty bad, and I was like, I hate kids. Dude, I punched the kid that did that to me. <laughs> yeah, I should have. I, I did it, and then he went and just... told his mom. He's like, he, he, and she came out and chewed me out, and I was like, your son kicked me as hard as he could in the shin for no reason. I even pulled on my pants leg, and she saw like the foot, like footprint bruise, and she didn't want to believe me. And I was like, uh... you know what, your kid is known. For being like a little brat. Ooh. So shut the front door and get out of my face. Yeah. You tell him. Because I ain't afraid to hit a man. Oh, yeah. Especially if he's a kid. It's like, where's your dad? I'm going to beat your dad. <laughs> I'm going to beat up your dad. Come on. Your dad can't beat up a kid because I'm still <laughs> technically a kid. So I can beat him up. Mm -hmm. So then I kicked his dad in the shin and ran off. There you go. Karma. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Checkmate. Uh, after he drove away, he then looked in the rearview mirror, and they were instantly gone. Oh. No trace. It'd be funny if you looked in the rearview mirror and then looked in front of him, and they were on the hood. Let us in the car! Pretty good. <laughs> Classic movie scene. Oh, yeah. Classic horror movie. Yeah. Or a B movie. Ooh. Other than the eyes, uh, the description wasn't that unusual of the kids. One of them was a redhead, pale skin, and freckles, so they come in all... Shapes and sizes, um, ginger, daywalker, white, mm -hmm. black, Asian. Any, okay. Any. It's yeah. good, it's multiracial. Very and uh, the other one was said to have black hair with an olive complexion. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like the thing from uh, The Ring. The girl from The Ring. No, she was pale and had black hair. I thought she was pale green. No, that's the Smash Brothers game we just oh, played. Oh, that's right. You gotta get your shit together, bro. It's like this Pellegrino. Exactly. Product placement. Mm -hmm. um, after this happened, he posted online, and immediately, that's when everything, that's what really kind of got the ball spinning. Like, everyone's like, wait, I, I've had this before, and I, yeah, I've seen that before, too. And everyone started telling stories. And it started popping up, like, hmm. all over the world. Like people telling stories of these black eyed children. Even as far away as Nebraska. Yep. Even as far away as Nebraska. That's wild. Yep. Um, BEKs aren't modern sightings, and modern sightings go back to over a century, peaking in certain decades and then dropping off over time. So it kind of comes and goes how often you see them. Mm. Uh, no one knows. No one knows where they're from, but there are theories from paranormal to supernatural. Some say uh, that human suffering, like they cause a lot of human suffering if you let them into the house. Of course. Because they always ask, like, hey, can we come in? They, but there haven't been too many people let them in. They don't have too many accounts of that. Uh, huh. 
So oh, like, okay. So here it is. Yeah, like I was telling you, the uh, they think that the eye is affected by black pigmentation due to a complex problem with iris, uh, sclera, and the pupil. Okay. Yeah. This may make their eyes seem completely black, which there's another story of a of a woman who had like a hotel and another theory people are like, well, do these black kids like black eyed kids, do they grow up to be black eyed adults? Yeah. And there is one account where a woman, she said a teenager of like 16 to 19 came up and she ran an apartment complex. He's like, hey, and of course, once again, in like a monotone, like deadpan like can i look at uh-huh. this apartment and she goes oh sure but then she noticed the eyes and freaks and slams the door in his face oh poor guy well once again it goes back to like it would it's kind of sad but funny like if this is actual <laughs> disorder and it's like somewhere there's like a conference hall filled with these people like hello welcome Wait, black eyed uh Hello and welcome, black-eyed anonymous people. Mm-hmm. We have been ridiculed for too long. Too long. Some people saying that we are aliens. Love me. Man, love us. Hey, do you have everything? Oh, Jesus Christ, shut the door! Ah! Burn the conference hall down. <laughs> and that's the end of all the black-eyed children. Aw. Slash people. Um, I wish I had black eyes. No, you don't so want you that. you look like a tough guy. You would look scary. It, it never works out in the movies. The movies always try to make it look all. It doesn't look right. It never looks like scary to me. Also, I'm I don't look young enough to pull off being a child. Shave your beard off. But I'm bald still. I'd have to get a wig. There's bald kids. I guess. Look at Tommy from the Rugrats. He was bald. That's true. Okay, one cartoon example. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um. <sighs> give me a minute. We should uh both try to prank people by being these kids and then they shoot us and then we collect money from them somehow through insurance <laughs> but then all that money will go to like healing our gunshot wounds oh it's true which Maybe supposedly not. you like never truly com- come recover back from from a gunshot wound. oh well then let's hope we don't get shot am i right just or what? Hope, hopefully it just grazes us yeah uh <laughs> So yeah, he has to view the apartment. Um, in both accounts, the woman and the guy in the car, they say that they were overcome with an immediate unknown fear. They just don't know why, but they just panicked and freaked out. Okay. Um, and it was all, and they never noticed the eyes immediately. It's never an immediate like, oh, holy crap, there's a black eyed kid like looking right at me. It's always something that, like kind of midway through conversation, they that they see it. So they're wondering if maybe if there are black eyed adults, maybe they can actually change their eyes like normal. Of course. So my thought is if they do have psychic abilities that make you freak out and scared, Mm -hmm. what if that's activated when that's why their eyes turn black? Or it's turned black from the tides. Tide pods. From tide pods, from eating tide pods. From eating tide pods. I knew it. Damn it. People eating those Tide Pods, man. Tide Pod Challenge. That's what happened. That's what brought it upon us. Yep. Dang you. Um, The UK has reported the same black-eyed children haunting (laughs) for 35 years. The woods of Canuck Chase, yeah, Canuck Chase, and Staffordshire have been haunted by dead children killed by a serial killer named Raymond Morris in the 1960s. I guess everybody doesn't love Raymond. Nope, not that Raymond. No. Uh, the the one that stands out is the black eyed child that alerts to that alerts to her presence by screaming <laughs> until someone saves her. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the classic siren move. If you're a siren, so this, no siren sings. Siren sings. What you're thinking of a banshee? I'm thinking of a banshee in the moors. Yeah. Woo! And no, it's not a haunting, like, oh, wow, that's kind of nice. It's like, it's like I don't know, I can't do it. That's a crazy scream. You keep screaming into my microphone. I know. Sorry, folks. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone's loving that. Sure. Um, she was actually captured on video on October 10th of 2015 
by a paranormal investigator named Tom Buckmaster. <laughs> it was filmed cool at name. 7 p.m. and shows a white silhouette. Is it the same girl from 1982? White yeah. silhouette. It's racist. It's just it is what it is. I mean, whatever. You know what? Why do ghosts always have to be white? Also, it's also Their clothes racist. are white. Oh, okay. And they said that there is no way that it is possible that she was a human because she was able to create her own light. Of course. Yeah. She was glowing. They also used a spirit box. And when they used a this, they recorded footsteps and voices saying, We are watching. We are looking. Hello. You can say it 5% or more by switching to Kako. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm oh terrified and informed. <laughs> that's so stupid. Uh, <laughs> wow, this is so scary. It's terrifying. It's difficult to encounter them. They seem to only approach, they seem to only appear in the early morning, like 2 a.m. when it's still dark out. Also, it oh. is said that they usually wear old timey clothing. <laughs> in 1940, post war sightings increased. And now had uh, and now they started reporting them with a they had an odor about them that almost sounded like sulfur or smelled like which means they're dis- it sound that that's <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> doesn't sulfur mean death um I've never smelled I don't know what a dead body smells like it smells terribly rancid the first time you smell it you're gonna know exactly what it is how do you know. Uh, you smelled a dead body? Well, there's um, you've ever heard of there's a ranch where they have de- decomposing bodies. Oh, and they Texas study State. Them. Is it Texas State? They'd have a thing, yeah. Yeah, and I can't remember it. where it is, but my grandfather had a ranch out, and I remember like when you drove nearby it, just oh, you, you could, could smell it. Going, it was awful. Coming it was near. like, what is that smell? <laughs> and there was a sign that said like Death Ranch, like so far ahead. Death Ranch. It was just like, what the crap? And wow. When I looked it up, that's what it is. They leave corpses out in the sun so they can know what they to study. Like. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's it's a terrible, terrible smell. What a horrible smell to go sulfur to work. is usually with um like volcanoes, fire and brimstone. Ah, yeah. Love the Lord your God. It's, and it's kind of stinky. It's almost like a like a. I've been like to art. Yellowstone, and they had they geysers. have sulfur pits, right? Yeah, they have pits. Uh, you it just didn't smells smell like anything? rotting eggs everywhere. There you go. Yeah, rotting eggs. Yeah. Like toots. It's awful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, now they're saying that they have a sulfur smell. And after 1947, black eyed kids were spotted near military sites and airports. Airports? Airports. Hmm. I wonder why airports. Can we get on the plane? <laughs> ah! Is this seat taken? Uh, oh, ah! <laughs> um. <laughs> What's real? Please so keep hands I- I've never and arms. heard this before, but it says that the sulfur smell, they've also smelt it like an alien abduction. So a lot of people who are abducted by aliens say they smell mm. sulfur. I've never heard that once, like anywhere. No, me neither. I think they were just pulling some. Sounds stuff. like they're making up a bunch of hoopla. Sh- hoopla, yeah. yeah. Quit knocking your bottle <laughs> against that. Your- I'm sorry. Goodness gracious. I'm just right. afraid of sulfur now. I have a sulfur phobia. It's all right. They continue to increase sightings in the 1950s due to, and they believe that this was all because of like Hollywood's interest in uh, UFOs and aliens. Hollywood. They're doing it again. There you go. Um, the, ne- the connections to aliens is due to the sulfur smell. Also, yeah, the abduction And sites. aliens have black eyes and gray skin. They don't have gray skin. They got white skin. But... Well, pale. What if they're alien-human hybrids? Racist. This is so racist. There's some abductions where people, one guy, there was one guy that got abducted, and I was reading about this because this was one story I wanted to talk about, different abductions. And this guy got abducted, and he said he was brought aboard. (laughs) They laid him on a table, stripped him naked, not against his will. They just like were like, hey, take your clothes off. Come on. And when he got naked, they covered him in like a weird clear jelly. Of course. And they led him into a room. (laughs) <laughs> and then while he was in the room, he said he was in there for about an hour, just standing around naked, covered in jelly. And then a woman entered the room who was also naked. Whoa. But then he realized, oh, this ain't no woman. This is like an alien that kind of looks like a woman. 
Uh-oh. She had high cheekbones, had some weird looking eyes, had a pointy chin. And before she entered the room, he said he remembered there like gray smoke coming in, like some, almost like a, a smoke or a steam. And he's like, what is this? He goes, apparently it must have been an aphrodisiac because we got it on. Wow. Yeah, that freaky alien love. Let's get it on. And then after they finished, she pointed to her belly oh, and then no. smiled and pointed up. Really? And said, where's that check? <laughs> I'm not going to pay for this baby. Oh, my God. Where my money? No. Where my money? <laughs> so he's got an alien baby somewhere out there in the universe. Man, you can't escape this. What's it called? Alimony checks. Alimony, yeah. <laughs> can't remember the word. It's like, what alien is that? I want to get abducted by that. <laughs> I want to get slathered in jelly. <laughs> you have to pay the alien afterwards. <laughs> so. I don't have any money. You took my clothes. <laughs> Big old bouncer alien comes in. Everything okay? <laughs> yes. Excellent. So no getting away. You're stuck on that ship. You got to pay or it's like, all right, mm-hmm. you're coming with us to our planet. By the way, the air is made out of acid. Enjoy. Oh. Yep. Ouch. Stings the nostrils. Stings everything. All right. Um... BEKs have also been seen writing with MIB agents, but due to a lack of photos, men in black, I thought that was just a made up thing. No, the movie. dude, no, the men in black, they believe that's a real thing. Oh, what's so his name from Ghostbusters said he saw the men in black. Oh, yes. Um, the one that he Robert Redford. No, he thinks of uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. They're like, don't think of anything. It's like, whatever you think of, that will be your enemy. It's like, just don't think of anything. Of your destructor. That's it. That's it. And then he thinks of it's just the first thing that popped into my head. Oh yeah. What's his name? Ike. No. Pac-Man. What's the actor's name? I don't know. King DDD. Quit saying characters that you can't. <laughs> I can't beat. think of his name. You can't think of his name. Uh, he did a lot of coke. That's all I remember. Did he really? Oh, what's his name? Now I'm mad. I can't remember. That you're. I think you're thinking of the other guy from National Lampoon. Mel Gibson. No. Tom Cruise. God, we're terrible with names. I, uh, I don't know. I don't. I can't remember his name. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. That's Dan it. Dan Aykroyd. It was something with. Ike. So yeah, supposedly Dan Aykroyd was doing a. Uh, <laughs> it was ten minutes to find his name. <laughs> we didn't even have to find it. Just had to wait for it to come to our uh-huh. minds. Anyways, he did a documentary on aliens. But then yeah, he believes in aliens. He's very yeah. adamant. Well, he immediately the, the whole ghosts. thing got shut down. Uh oh. Like he just got a phone call and said, "Hey, we're shutting everything down." And he's like, "What? Why are we shutting it down?" And at the same time, he was looking outside. He said he'd been followed by a mysterious black car with men in black suits, who he said would appear and then disappear. So he mm. believes in the MIB like wholeheartedly. It might be an aliens. Will Smith is out there. What about Men in Black 2? Does he believe in that? Of course. He's getting jiggy with it. Okay. Get jiggy with it. Nice. Na 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 na. Summer, summer, summertime. Is that it? Summertime. No, that's just a Will Smith rap song. Oh, goodness. Um, One of my favorite Will Smith raps. Uh, oh, so another thing that they have have to do, the another reason why they think the Black Eyed Children, they this is kind of proving... That they don't exist. There was a controlled test in 1939 that shows that tricks of light can make certain colors appear darker or lighter. And then another test was done okay. that showed people see what they want to see. Two images were cut out of the same cloth. They had a gl- green cloth. We're cut from the same cloth. And they I? cut. We were. Mm-hmm. And they cut two images. One of them was a leaf and the other was a donkey. It was an Erickson. When they held... Both the images up. They said, oh, yeah, the green is way, the leaf is way green. Yes. Because they, yes. that's what they believed in their head. So they were like, all right, so maybe people, they'll just see something. They see a couple of creepy kids, and they think they're going to see some black-eyed kids, and that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's all mental. Maybe the kids are the men in black. No, they are not. Because okay. they've seen writing with the men in black. Oh, but what if they're being trained? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're saying? Maybe they're in trainees. They could be. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. Speculate away. Um, A social scientist says that BEK 
that BEKs are so intertwined with mainstream culture today that you can't tell genuine footage from art, fo- art or photoshops. Wow. Like that's how engrossed and like how addicted it's gotten since 1996. He was, Brian was the one that started all this. Brian. <sighs> Brian and creepy pasta. Look at what you've done, Brian. What have was you it done worth it? Uh, in 2012, a film called BEK, Black Eyed Kids, was produced using Kickstarter funding. Huh. And in 2013, even MSN listed an article entitled Spooky Sightings of Black Eyed Kids. Although it was taken down an hour later. <laughs> really? Yeah. They took it down an hour yeah. later. <laughs> They're like, oh, get this Uh-oh. down. Um, some stories seem to say uh, they may be, or they're saying that some of the stories are actually copycats of other stories, you know, and it's just people keep telling the yeah, same story. Yeah, it's kind of going viral talking. or whatever you say. What exactly. The kids say. But that all changes upon this next story right here. <gasps> the native Ogala, Ogala Sox people, yeah, have never heard of black-eyed kids. They were shaken and fe- they were shaken and feared at the return of these children. With soulless eyes. Multiple witnesses said that BEKs tried to interact with the children three times. They first asked access to their homes, and then they asked if they could, they were refused every time. Then they were asked, Hey, could we have some food? Yeah. Which the kids were like, No, we can't give you any food. And finally, on their last attempt, they asked, Could we have some blood? I want some blood. Give me some blood. Blood light. Blood uh-huh. light. I'm going to die. Blood light. Yep. They also uh, reported that at the time that the kids kept appearing, their all of their pets went missing. Well, that's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. They're eating the pets. They're doing something to them. That or the pets know this shit ain't right. I'm gonna oh, get no. up. And January seven, January twenty seventeen, a shaman was called out to bless the reservation. Of course, you have to have the shaman bless the. Yep. A lot of people ask, like, what happens if you let them in? Some people say that the children become panicked or unresponsive or scream. Some even convulse in a seizure-like manner. Jeez. Others say they inflict pain or illnesses. Well, one elderly couple found out what happened. Uh! An elderly couple living in rural Vermont, way off the beaten path, at 2 a.m. heard a knock. They're so far out there, they're like, well, exactly. They woke up, they didn't know what it was, so uh, there had been a recent snow, so they were like, well, maybe somebody, you know, their car broke down, or they're having car trouble. Yeah. And so he looks out the window, he doesn't see any car, he doesn't see any tire tracks, all he sees are a pair of footprints walking up to his door. He's like, oh, crap, there's someone at the door, well, let me go check it, check it out. Yeah. He opens up the door and immediately is greeted by two children. A young boy and a young girl dressed in old-fashioned clothing. The kids acted strange and wouldn't make eye contact with them, making him very wary to let them in. Don't look at your eyes. Exactly. Please. Uh, the kids were very, when he asked, hey, where are your parents? The kids were very vague about it, saying their parents would pick them up soon. Uh, hmm. being the kind people that they were, they then allowed the kids to enter inside the house and they continued to ask them questions about how they got there. The kids okay. became unresponsive immediately and just sat on the couch staring straight ahead. The husband <laughs> immediately felt dizzy and anxious and the wife noticed that noticed the black eyes from the kids and immediately became stricken with fear. They then asked, could we use the bathroom? While, you know, they asked if they could use the bathroom while the wife ran over and tried to take care of her husband. Who had immediately started a heavy nosebleed. Ah. Yep. So the kids walk off to the bathroom. The encounter ended when all the lights went out in the house. The children who stood in the dark hallway (laughs) announced in a sing-song voice, Our parents are here. La, 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 la. Exactly. They announced that their parents were here, immediately exiting the house, leaving the door wide open for the terrifying couple to see 
two men dressed in black driving the car as that the kids drove into or climbed into. They were in pea cuts? They can't tell. They just know they were in black. Okay. One guy kept bobbing his head. He's like, yeah. Like yeah. Black robes? Like wizards? Yep. Not black suits? Black suit robes. Oh, okay. Combo. That's, those are good. So nice possibly pea coats. Is that why you want to know? Because you got a pea coat and you want to be yeah. black. Um, uh, 30 minutes after they left, the power was finally returned back to them and all seemed to go well, except three of the four cats had disappeared. They and always the take cats. Three of the four cats had disappeared. And the other cat, the fourth cat, uh, died from a fatal hemorrhage and was found dead not far from where the kids sat. Wow, they like killed it. Yep. Or Murdered kid. it. Poor little cat. Meow. There you go. The wife suffered from frequent nosebleeds and dizziness while the husband developed skin cancer, which he is now getting treatment for. <laughs> he got skin cancer. I think that might just be not, I don't know if it's related to the, uh, the visit. <laughs> I don't know, man. He also uh, had a toothache later that year. <laughs> he also had erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not related to the story. It's completely related, he says. <laughs> no! Just the other night, I pleased the hell out of my wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> that has to be what's causing it. <laughs> we don't know how many there are. We don't know the location or their agenda. Are they vampiric? Are they demonic? Government experiments that have been let loose onto the world or possibly escaped. Are they escaped from UFOs? Or are they just... One thing that has been noticed is BEKs target those who show interest in them and whatever. And whether it be reading articles, watching YouTube videos, or listening to podcasts about their existence. So tonight... So we're already targeted. Be sure to lock your doors oh and your God. windows. Yeah, we have to. Yep. And that is the story of the Black Eyed Children. So once again, if uh, I hope, if you did listen to this, I hope you're prepared to come face to face. Really hope no one knocks on our door right now. Oh, who could that be? Oh my God! God! All right. Well, that was B E beautiful. B E A beautiful. Mm hmm. No, just B E beautiful. Not B E A. Don't fix my joke. I am going to fix it. I I'm going to tweak you. it a little bit. B E A beautiful. How dare you? Well, I made want... it better. Okay. I, By I, making it worse? I oiled it up and now it's slick as the dickens. <laughs> oh, just like my back is oiled. There you go. There you go. Now we can hear you. Well, now speaking of death all right let's talk about some death everyone let's nice. meditate on death for a moment um where will you be five after five years after you die well apparently i'm going to jesus's house mm. what about your physical body though uh some probably zombie. my parents i told my parents just to like set out in the wilderness for animals to eat there we go yep actually i want something funny to be done with my body that's no i want something like you know i want to like prank those... my nephews, be like, "Oh, go see your uncle Matt," and put like a spring underneath me. So we're like, "Goodbye, uncle." <laughs> <laughs> you totally got us. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> but I'll be in heaven. Like, <laughs> did you see that, Jesus? Got him. Got him. That's pretty. And cool. they can't ever get me back. Never. Because they're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Yes. Wow, that got dark. <laughs> no. Um, <coughs> sorry. Disgusting. I want to talk about the mysterious death of Meriwether Lewis, also known as Mr. Lewis, also known as Lewis and Clark. <laughs> Second to way is bitches. Yeah. That's crazy. So, uh, wait, they were Second to way's bitches? Yes. Come on, dude. You know, she was the one in charge of that relationship with those two guys. Oh, yeah, of course. They didn't even know where they were going. She was leading. That's them why through she's the on woods. a coin and they're off. Not on anything. They're not on junk, yeah. Yep. So, little background of Lewis. He's known as a diplomat, 
an explorer, a scientist, a governor, a soldier, and the official leader of the Lewis and Clark expedition. He's been called undoubtedly the greatest pathfinder the country has ever known. And now he's dead. So what does that mean? It means we're still talking about him today. You know what? That's the thing I want to say, too, is that people who uh, are for nihilism, they'll say that it doesn't matter what happens in your life because you're going to be dead in whatever, how many years. So who, why, why does it matter? But that's lame. I don't CJ? like that. Not just CJ. Other people have said this, too. <laughs> I just remember that one time we were hanging out, and he's like, nothing matters. Uh, yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is, though, Marcus Aurelius from Rome, famous Roman leader, said that what we do in our life echoes throughout eternity. So we're still talking about Lewis right now. Well, yeah, he did something pretty amazing. Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. But I think what they're talking about is the majority of people. Like, not everyone's going to be known for that long. and. For any, hardly anything at all. That's true. But it's kind of bad because they're telling no one to ever try. So now you're not going to have that one person that stands out. Yeah, I, I, whatever. It's a fatalistic and pointless thing to say, and I don't agree with it. I don't either. Uh, and I think it's stupid. And you're stupid if you think that. I'm going to continue to try even after I die. Yes, dude. That'd be sick. That's why, like a lich. That's why I've rigged it so that even after I die, I have multiple stories to keep telling uh-huh. for this podcast. Yes. So you can keep on going keep, and like keep, I'm still here. Keep mine in that vein. There you go. Uh, do you know Jesus was a lich? Technically. What? Because he died and came back to life, so he's a lich. <laughs> by D and D, well, by D and D standards. Yeah, someone told me that. I forgot who. Of course, it was probably Brian. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so back to Meriwether Lewis, which is a silly first name. Hello, Meriwether. It's Lewis now. Yeah, just call me Lewis. He was born in 1774 in Charlottesville, Virginia. Ooh, Charlottesville. Yeah, Charlottesville's got some bad history right now. But he joined the Virginia militia and helped quell the 1794 Whiskey Rebellion. The Whiskey Rebellion. What? Why were they rebelling against whiskey? A tax that uh, Hamilton was imposing. A federal tax. It was uh, Alexander one of the earliest, Hamilton. Mm-hmm, one of the earliest. This is kind of off topic, but I mean, I, I mentioned it. I brought up the whiskey rebellion, so I'll say. Uh, Hamilton brought up this tax. They're like, "We'll just make money off whiskey, bruh. And then everyone was like, "We don't want to be taxed for whiskey," and they rebelled. So Alexander it's Hamilton. Simple. Alexander Hamilton. Da, 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 da. I don't know the words. Is that a real song? <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, uh, there's that whole play. oh the whole Hamilton thing. <laughs> Is that about the Whiskey Rebellion? I don't wonder. think so. It's just about his life. Oh, yeah. And apparently he wasn't from America. So they said. I don't know. Then he joined the regular army. Oh, Lewis. Classic <laughs> Sly movie. guy. He joined the regular army and he became the... Re- the re- oh, he reached the rank of captain, capitan. And he also met Clark. Hey, Clark. William. Well, it's William Clark, but we just everyone calls him by their last name. So. Oh, hey, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Clark? Clark. How is your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> it becomes the room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Clark. Um, then just right after that, after his time in the army, Thomas Jefferson was like, what up, bro? You're going to be my secretary. Brings him on board. Mm. And they uh, immediately starts planning the core of Discovery Expedition. Ooh. That's a cool thing. Scruffy little I want you to her. discover everything discover it all for me and then so he's like all right so i'll pick you 28 year old lewis and then your buddy clark 32 so it's kind of like us two like we're pretty much the same oh hi, we're basically clark. two explorers but we Wait, explore how old were they? 28 and 32 isn't that crazy that is i always imagined them being like 40 but 30 late 20s early 30s is the perfect time um, Alexander the Great, he what took over the world, the known world, when he was twenty-two. Uh, yeah, it was either that or Alexander Hamilton. It wasn't Hamilton. Oh, uh, it was the other one. No, I don't think he got to the states until he was in his thirties. Alexander the Great, Hamilton. Oh, stay on board. Stay on board. <laughs> I'm trying. You're talking about a different Alexander. Well, exactly. I said Alexander the Great. The Great, the I best president that. ever. It's not a. I'm gonna slap that cue ball head of yours. <laughs> hey, hey now. Say so, that with love. So they had a great fun time. They met Sacagawea. They probably had a weird, awkward threesome. 
And then uh, do you really think so? Probably. I mean, or do you think she like chose one of them and it was just like a rivalry? I do. Like... I I want to read their journals because they did journal, and I'm thinking about buying uh, Lewis's journal to see what he said. How much is his journal? Probably like a dollar or something. I don't know. I don't think it'd be a dollar. I'm not going to buy his original journal. I'm going to buy oh, a reprint. Oh, well, then what's the point? Buy the original. <laughs> buy the original, his very own That way own you know the words aren't journal. changed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know nothing's changed. It's like, I took Sacagawea last night. Oh, God. This isn't about this. I performed. This whole story is about after the expedition. Me and Clark did Clark. a... Me and Clark. Eiffel Tower. We tapped that shit. Come on, Clark. Clark, get in there, boy. Oh man! <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm killing it. So, uh, trouble started after the expedition or exploration. They came back and like, yay, fun times are now over. Of course. Uh, Thomas Shefford appoint, appointed uh, Lewis as governor of Louisiana Territory. All right. And he took up his post nearly two years later. And he faced some challenges almost immediately, like personality conflicts. It's just like work and world. It's like a real job. Well, yeah, you went from where there was next to nobody out there and now having to please, like, hundreds of Yeah, you're just trying to sleep at night and not get eaten by a bear, but now you're trying to, like, navigate awkward office conflicts and people's passive-aggressive behaviors. I would like to not pay any taxes this month, so I'm just going to slide my daughter your way. I will not pay my taxes, Sam. And, uh, yeah, it was just a hard time for him. And he was experiencing personal problems as well. He Ooh. he had always been a sufferer of periodic spells of what they call melancholy back in the day, which I think he just would. I think he just had depression. Uh, but that's like real depression, not like the over. Yeah, not, overdiagnosed of today. Yeah, yeah. I feel sad today. I guess I'm not going to eat gluten today because I'm depressed. <laughs> uh, and then land speculation was draining his bank account. Who? Land, uh, Lewis's bank account was getting going lower from land speculation. What? Mm-hmm. Draining his finances, and he started to drink a lot. Kind of a bad. Thankfully, there's no whiskey tax. Bad. <laughs> yes, good thing he's he quelled that. Uh, so hoping to resolve some of his financial questions, he decided one day, all right, I'm, I'm going to go to Washington D.C. and I'm going to figure this out. And so he leaves from St. Louis, Missouri in 1809 but this would be his last trip let's just say that okay yep. he ain't seeing Sacagawea no mo he died of autoerotic asphyxiation <laughs> yeah. so traveling with him was john pernia which was his servant and then major james neely i don't really know much about neely other than that they know each other uh so it, while they're going through tennessee they started raining a lot and uh two of the pack horses flew off not flew off, but they fled into the woods. <laughs> There's a glitch in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so Neely advised Lewis to continue on while he ran, rounded up the horses. So he's like, all right, I guess I'll just go on forward. So he agreed, and he found lodging at a roadhouse called Grinder Stand. Roadhouse. I know, it sounds kind of cool. Grinder Stand. <laughs> or, that's where the app Grinder came from. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Grinder Stand. Uh, no women allowed. Uh, <laughs> Just nothing but big, rock hard, solid mountain men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> much. Welcome to Grinders. Do you want a sub? Are you meeting someone here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So he had his servant, Pernia, stay in the barn, which is a bit. Messed up, but hey, different times. Times were different back then. <sighs> yep. Um, and then, but Mrs. Grinder would later say that Lewis spent the time in the evening in the common room, pacing around and mumbling in strange manner. And she heard then she heard gunshots, but she was too afraid to investigate. So the next morning, Lewis was found with a gunshot in the head and one in his chest. He was still barely alive. Dude, that's what sucked. Apparently, Lincoln survived his headshot initially. Really? Those yeah, guns sur- must have sucked back in the day. That's what I'm saying. They, they was just a big ass ball bearing. So the the ball the it's ball bearing like- was actually stuck in his eye or something. Oh my god! And so yeah, supposedly he was alive like the next morning for a little bit. How could it get stuck in his eye if they shot him in the back of the head? Goes through. 
It but that would kill you if the bullet went through your skull, uh, through your brain. There are some people that have survived headshots that way. Like, you know. What? Look, look it up. What? Abraham Lincoln what? survived not for long. He was like, there was no way he was functional. Yeah. But he was just like, he was, he still had a pulse. Right. Like, he was probably awake in agonizing pain or mm-hmm. just couldn't comprehend the simplest of thought. True. Truly. What is salt? I don't know. What is spicy? An ACL. It's a code word for salt. <laughs> what? An ACL is like the, the chemical name for it. Oh, my gosh. Nerd. You asked me what salt was. I told you. I wasn't literal. I'm just like, <gasps> speaking from... Whatever. Just go on with the All story. All right, fine. So that began the conspiracy of was it suicide? Was it a murder? Was it an assassination or a robbery? It was obviously freaking murder because you think so? You don't suicide yourself. I I'll do it first in the chest and then in the head. Mm. I guarantee you there was a scuffle and they're like just blap him and they blap blap shot one off and they're like crap we got to make it look like a suicide make him shoot himself in the head right okay well Lewis and Clark you can't ever explore anymore he's like uh huh. Maybe it was Clark. He was mad at him, taking all the, being like J- Thomas Jefferson's best buddy. Clark was mad. Is there like seriously? Is that no. a serious idea? Uh, no, that's not one that's been held uh, with any realness. I don't think Clark Same. was anywhere nearby. I but, mean, you don't you don't shoot someone you had a three way with. That's so true. But it's like you have a bond at that point. <laughs> don't point at me. We're not doing anything. What? After this. <laughs> It just did finger uh, guns. It just finger banged you. Oh, Bang. you got me. Man, I once, dude, did I ever tell you that one time? I was at a bar with some people I didn't know very well, and I, like, I did the finger point and, like, pretend to shoot them. And I was like, oh, that was finger bang. And I said that, and they, like, they were, like, freaked out because I said that. And I was like, oh, that's not what that means at all. They were, like, really awkward and freaked out. And you never talk to them again. No, they don't talk to you anymore. That's fine, though. Get them out of your life. You don't need that poison. Yeah, that's whatever. All right. So, anyways uh finger bang neely the guy that rounded up the horses remember yes he cut he shows up later after he's like been shot hours later and he, so he finds the body and buries him nearby where he remains to this day and he took his, and he took all his papers and stuff and uh he carried the rest of them to washington but he wrote this to thomas jefferson it is with extreme pain that I have to inform you of the death of His Excellency Meriwether Lewis, Governor of Upper Louisiana. He died on this morning of the 11th, and I'm sorry to say, by suicide. Uh... Damn. So that's what he Why wrote. Why was he hurting? I don't know. That's just what his voice sounded like. Is it? No. That, you say, he's got a terrible voice. <laughs> Sorry, that was stupid. Such an idiot. It was cute. I like it. So was it really suicide? Because no. from the beginning, there were questions about whether Lewis committed suicide or were you, if he was murdered or what. Because the career associates, including the presidential man, Thomas Jefferson, they all believed he died by his own hand. And some family members and others maintained that he was killed. Though most historians today accept the theory that Lewis took his own life, there are still the conspiracy theories that are going around that... Uh, Maybe he didn't. If he took his own life, why would he shoot himself in the chest first? Like, that's like yeah. suicidal, like, 101. That, to headshots. me, is the most telling thing of the of all the data. Not only that, the fact that, obviously, they buried the guy. They're like, all right, just, just get rid of him. Also, he was in charge of the Louisiana, the whole Louisiana Territory, which is huge. Was uh, was he part of the Louisiana Purchase? Or? Uh, I don't really, I don't think so. I just think Thomas yeah. Jefferson gave him the responsibility after... After they, they finished their it. expedition. I think I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of those things where it's like, all right, we need a celebrity, someone to kind of take the reins to shift all focal point, someone we can control, someone we're just like, do this and they'll do it. Yeah, I feel like. And he wasn't one of those people once he got into office. Uh-huh. Like, Wait, he's I bet. actually got ideas. Uh huh. Like, this isn't what we want to do at all. This is going to throw a wrench. It's like, we got to get rid of him. I think also ethically he was uh, a good person in general because he was when they were on their expedition, they were trying to create peace treaties with all, with all the tribes and stuff. So they were trying to be very diplomatic and good. Yeah. And I feel like you got there and didn't realize how dark it was at the top, as they say. Yep. Anyways, uh, some of the people that were close to him, like Neely, 
his travel companion, uh, this other guy, uh, Russell, uh, the commander at Fort Pickering, and another guy, Alexander Wilson, one of his friends, they all said in suicide in letters that he had committed suicide. So people close to him all are saying, all are corroborating, is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, saying that. But some and other historians theorize that he may have suffered a paresis, which is a disorder characterized primarily by impaired mental function caused by damage of the brain from untreated syphilis. Or that he was suffering from malaria, because both okay. those affect your mind and your body. I was wondering, because I, I thought I'd heard something where he was, they believed he was sick. But at the same time, like, why? He had mentioned that he wasn't feeling good, and that he had fever and stuff on the way to, uh, to Washington. So he wasn't in a good spot already. Of course not. But at the same time, like, again, I just want to bring to the gunshot. Like, why would he shoot himself in the chest? Because it's right there. It's right here. Exactly, but how awkward is that Shout to shoot yourself? The heart, and you're to you're blame. Too late. You're to well, blame. That's the thing. He was just shot in the chest. He wasn't shot in the heart, was he? He was shot in the chest. But your heart is in your chest. But so, your chest is a large checkmate. area, and your sh- chest heart mate. is in one spot. Oh. You can be shot in the heart. And shot can, in like, the heart! Go between your lungs. In you between your lungs! You have a beautiful voice. Mm-hmm. And then far, th- and even more evidence says that he died by his own hand of the fact that prior to leaving for St. Louis, or prior to leaving f- for uh, Washington, so he had given several associates the power to distribute his possessions in the event of his death, and had recently composed a will. So right before this trip, he, had com- he did air all the things. You know, he tied up all his knots, as they well, say. Well, no, shit. Back in the day, it's like, all right, I'm going to venture out to the market. I'll probably die. <laughs> Honey? I dug four shallow graves for you and the kids, so Just if you guys case. die before I get back. Yeah. It's like stepping outside was a nightmare. You could die from anything. You could die from a splinter. True. That's very true. Uh, so I can understand why it's like, all right, I'm about to take this trip. Might as well do my will. <laughs> so that's kind of what um, people that think he committed suicide. But what about the other people? Uh, despite it being just a clear cut case of suicide, some people think... Uh, Something there's a bit of murder, and so why would he do it in such a way that he would linger in such great pain too? You know, they found him still barely alive. If you're going to commit suicide, why would you do it in that way? So, and the robbery motive goes farther with numerous suspects, including random bandits known to have lurked upon that area, uh, or his servant John Pernier, the guy that was in the barn, you know, or Neely himself, because as Major Neely. Uh, Mrs. Grinder said that he was had almost no reaction to Lewis's death. I can hear the the fizz of your drink. That was cool. Uh, she said that Neely barely reacted to the guy's death, and he was conveniently absent that whole night. It's like, hmm. Yeah, as soon as you were reading the story, I thought it was really weird that he walked in like, oh, he's committed suicide. I'll s- bury him right uh, here. Yeah, and I'll bury him right now, and I'll take all his papers. Uh. Yeah, conveniently gone the whole night. And others would uh, would say that he retold the story. It sounded really rehearsed and me- and kind of boring. Like he didn't care. And there are documents that appear to be missing when they were delivered to Washington. So Neely was known to have been heavily in debt also. So I'm wondering if Neely was. He might have been He paid. should have been investigated more. Of course. But once again, like I was saying, it's one of those things where they just wanted a celebrity figure a puppet to dance for him, mm-hmm. and he was not going to dance. Yeah. And then the the slave that the guy had with him, or they call him servant, but come on, he's a slave. He's a Creole from, from Louisiana. He but vanished like- immediately after his death and uh, supposedly returning to New Orleans. And later, a watch that belonged to Lewis was found in New Orleans. Ooh. So maybe it was multiple people involved. Yeah. I don't know. The another theory of assassination suggests that Lewis had discovered secrets about General James Wilkinson, his predecessor as governor of Upper Louisiana, and if revealed, would not destroy the reputation of, would not only destroy the reputation of General Wilkinson, but also tarnish that of Thomas Jefferson. Pizza Gate. Mm-hmm. Jefferson Gate. Hashtag so, Jefferson Pizza Gate. So maybe Jefferson was like, oh yes, he was suicidal. Poor man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that it makes sense in that way. So, I personally believe 
he was murdered. I don't think he committed suicide. Of course. They took care of him, and then they went back to having their mask on, eyes wide shut part, sex mm-hmm. parties. Mm-hmm. And as for the burial site, uh, for years, Lewis lay just in an unmarked grave off the Natchez Trace. Yeah, why? W- that's another unmarked. thing. Like, why would they not want to give him a better burial? Like, oh, did you bury him? Yeah, I just kind of found a ditch. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. Um, and then, however, in 1848, a special commission was established by the state of Tennessee to consider building a monument to Lewis. That commission examined his body, and the physician on the committee wrote in his report that Lewis was most likely a victim of assassins. So, Well, don't build anything now, because they're just going to tear it down. Oh, yeah, dude. tearing down the uh-huh. monuments. Yeah. So today, his isolated burial spot, burl, his burl spot, burl spot, in Tennessee, is marked by a monument that acknowledges the controversy surrounding his death stating it marks the spot where Lewis's life of romantic endeavor and lasting achievement came tragically and mysteriously to its close. Mm. And that's all she wrote. Damn. It's too bad. Poor guy. There's even some rumors that his, uh, people say that the burial site's even haunted. Ooh. Visitors have reported that there's been, they've seen ghostly figures, heard voices and tale of restless energy that pervades the spot. Others describe this specifically hearing the words, so hard to die. Perhaps what appears to be suicide is not enough for Lewis as he continues to reach out for the mystery to be solved. Definitely wasn't syphilis. (laughs) I just just heard him say something. (laughs) Definitely clean, ladies. (laughs) Ghost wink. (laughs) So, yeah, that's uh, that's all she wrote. That's insane. Politics I guess, is like I guess it wasn't so merry weather. <laughs> Too soon, bro. I'm sorry. That's politics, man. Don't ever get into politics. They're all dark like that. Yeah. All right. At I least it wasn't re- Louis C.K. <laughs> just regular merry weather. Would have just Lewis. like started jerking off. In yeah. Front of him. <laughs> Jeez. What are you doing with that gun? Oh God, it's not a gun. Ah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Lock your doors and windows. Do not answer. And if you see small children at your door, don't even open it. And if you ever vote, don't vote for. <laughs> Just don't vote. I believe we're wholeheartedly. We're the anti-voting coalition. Well, I, dude, that's what everybody thought that for me at work because I was just there. Are some people at work is like, I don't think you're smart enough to vote. Hmm. <laughs> I think you have to have some Scandal. intelligence to smart. Yeah, yeah. Or... To smart. <laughs> well, wow. I can't vote, obviously. <laughs> you need some intelligence to smart. You heard me? <laughs> All right, I'm smart. S M R T. Smart. All right. There you go. All right. Good night. Stay beautiful. Love Stay you. classy, Austin. Goodbye.